Alright, so here we go. This might take me a while to get through, so just bear with me. I want to make sure I hit everything here. This is uh, set up out here uh, while I was at uh, DEF CON, uh, first time out here. And um, actually, I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, everyone out here. This was uh, an amazing time. Uh, appreciate the uh, RF Village uh, taking care of me. And. Um, Hacker Warehouse, Blade RF, uh, Renowned. Uh, there's um, a lot of people that I've met out here uh, that are in the community. Uh, SDR++ uh, uh, developer, uh, Armin, I, and I'm probably going to miss some people here. Iceman and his, uh, uh, really excited about his uh, Flipper Zero firmware. <laughs> and um, yeah, just a whole uh, slew of people, uh, people that uh, use uh, Dragon OS and have did some really cool projects with it. Uh, so I feel like I'm going to forget something or for, um, just to mention somebody, but I just want to say thank you to everyone. All right. Uh, what I have set up here is um, two stationary um, setups that uh, were originally going to consist of, or well, do consist of Kraken SDRs. Uh, maybe not the greatest idea to set them up uh, like inside with um, you know the glass and reflections and you know who knows what uh, but what I what I have done is uh, change those stations over to what I'm going to demonstrate here which is um, using one of the RTL SDRs inside the Kraken SDR an SDR for space like I've shown in the past to monitor specific frequencies and so when some communication happens on those frequencies uh, SDR uh, for space will um, capture the IQ data, uh, do FM demodulation, feed it over to Whisper CPP, and then will transcribe those messages from the stations and then send them over uh, 802.11h Wi-Fi Halo back to a uh, in another instance of Dragon OS uh, that is running. Uh, the mosquito service is started. I've did some configuration like I've shown in the past and the messages are coming in and uh, the goal will be eventually to get that data uh, into an elastic stack uh, setup and then uh, yeah I'll go from there as far as what the the data can do but alright uh, I've got this picture up just to show um, at, at this uh, rough location is the war dragon set up and the Kraken SDR and it's it's all configured and has a Wi-Fi uh, Halo device on it, and that K or sorry, that one is actually running as the access point. Um, there's a client over here that is what I'm recording on with a laptop, and then there is a client over here which is actually the Steam Deck, aka the Dragon Deck, running nearly the same configuration as the War Dragon, just listening to different frequencies. Okay, so I'll drop out of this map. This is the MQTT Explorer, which once we configure everything, this can be used to view um, the information that's going into the MQTT server. And then ultimately, like I said, it'll get over to the Elastic Stack once I get to that. A couple important things uh, that I made notes of, so you know, thanking everyone. Uh, I'm, okay, so make sure uh, MQTT is running. So. I, uh, lo this this laptop that I'm locally recording on, I've already started the. Uh, we can see the mosquito service, and let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Okay, so we see the service is running. The other important thing is um, that actually bef before starting it, we would come in here and add a listener and the allow anonymous. I put both of those in there just so uh, the stations that are uh, outside on the uh, Wi-Fi Halo network can communicate back, you know, so it's listening on all interfaces. Um, 
you know you can make this a more secure setup but this is just to get this going so those two things uh, yep grab the MT MQTT Explorer and then I have this is uh, in the war dragon I'm, I'm SSH in over Wi-Fi halo and this DDC whisper uh, GPS that was um, put together by Llama uh, Llama Blue I hope I'm saying that right uh, um, the uh, SDR for space uh, developer and um, this will you know be out like uh, publicly once um, once it's all uh, cleaned up but uh, big things in here um, just like I've talked about before I made sure the right whisper model is set and obviously that model is available in the user source whisper CPP um, models folder and so that that's good um, I've asked for a GPS location it can pull from a uh, GPS a real uh, GPS but in this case I just set it to false put some Latin longs in there uh, we can uh, and I'll explain later I see what's happening now but uh, if I had configured different host names on each machine that would have that would have helped once I get to the MT, MQTT Explorer I, I had this uh, great idea that I could make multiple uh, subscriptions in there and obviously I still got something to learn listening frequency put that in there uh, gain threshold and then of course I set uh, MQTT to true the IP address there which is of this laptop on the Wi-Fi Halo network and really I didn't change anything else um, what I attempted to do was come in and so you can see it was kind of confusing you have GPS settings again but in this case the settings.js files pulled in and seemed to overwrite what's here so I didn't change anything there uh, let's see did come down you can see talking about host name again uh, what I attempted to do on the second machine I thought I could change the topic and uh, but all that ended up doing was um, creating a separate topic for the RMS uh, I, I thought the messages and stuff so I have to read up on that a little bit more oh the other thing is that in this file the uh, FM whisper.js file I made sure that I uncommented the RTL SDR and that is set Okay, and really nothing else I, I changed. So I'll close out of there and come up. And I'm going to start. So I'm in the DDC uh, Whisper GPS folder. Uh, I'm going to reference the uh, binary, the SDR VM binary that's about like three directories up. And then I'm saying a dash F uh, to feed it this JS file so this is going to start the SDR for space binary up it's going to um, and you'll know it's uh, working if it continues because it got that connection to the MQTT server in this case over the uh, network and so what I'm gonna do is I feel like I'm forgetting something I always try and point this out and I need to Get a little more time to go through this but just know that it is using uh, this 802.11ah normally I would show all the clients but in this case I am a client and so I would need to be on the access point to see those list um, all those links uh, all the uh, halo devices connected uh, I really need to step through here and I'll, I'll show how to set up this I keep forgetting to do that in a, in a future video because there is some nuances of like setting this access point uh, mode and client mode up. Alright, so now let's kick this off. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit of assistance here and uh, we'll get this going. Let's see, so um, okay, so uh, let's see. I'm going to be listening to both frequencies here and we're going to start seeing these um, messages um, coming up being decoded uh, and we'll see if we can we can it'll queue up the tasks uh, so it may take it may lag a little bit um, uh, in the beginning but we'll, we'll see how this is going to work and anything else I can't think anything else so um, so we're two different locations two frequencies um, 
you know you could set this up to be automated and oh, okay and there we go we got the left side kicking off and so it is going to create some tasks there uh, there's some conversation going back and forth uh, let's come up and see what was decoded hey Riley you believe what I found last night you got <laughs> to do a big corporate server server Let's see what do we got seriously my plan I like so you can so you can see there's some conversation going back and forth here um, on the um, the one particular frequency and then whisper CPP is attempting to transcribe that information and then if we look over in the MQTT server we're gonna see that those messages are coming across so we can see the old one, you know, it's comparing with previous message here. And I'm just going to put it right here and we'll pay attention to when this side was, this side is going to kick off. Where I kind of messed up is, uh, when, like I said, the station one, station two. So we can see the RMS values uh, in real time. Uh, I didn't fully understand the whisper task, but uh, I'll work that out. So all the messages are coming in under this uh, station one and... Uh, that's probably where the uh, what am I trying to say that's probably where I would have wanted to uh, specify the host name but I'll, I'll work that out so we can have multiple different stations feeding in here properly so that we can pull this data back out into the elk stack uh, or elastic stack I think it is isn't. okay so now let's see um, we got that one going recording and let's see if we get this other let's see I'm just gonna make it simple okay and both of these stations uh, the the train or the uh, the transmitter is, uh, you know, a decent uh, amount away. So now we've got the right side kicking off the 499 megahertz. So there we go. How's the weather today? Uh, let's see. It's been pretty hot. So now the messages from that uh, is all streaming back into the MQTT Explorer as well. Okay. So a lot going on there. Uh, I hope I didn't go too fast through it. What I'll try and do is uh, maybe go into depth more on the specific pieces like the MQTT Explorer. That's a, a simple Google search, uh, pulling down the app image and then running it, uh, making it executable and running it from the command line. It actually pulls up this uh, GUI here, like pulling that data from the MQTT server on this uh, laptop. What else? Anything else? Uh, I I think that is um, about it. I again appreciate um, the support. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, loved uh, DefCon. Had a blast. Uh, yeah. All right. Hope to do this again next year.